Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and to part two of my In to Out series. So last week in part one, I talked about the setup position and adjustments that you can make to help promote your swing to be more degrees in to out. Now for this week in part two, I'm gonna be talking about the mistakes that a lot of people make in their back swings that makes it very difficult for them to swing it in to out and some general concepts that you can start applying that will help you start drawing the golf ball and get you away from slicing it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. Okay, so for the backswing, there's three main concepts that I'm gonna be talking about. And the first has to do with rotation and the difference between a player that swings it out to in versus a player that swings it more degrees in to out. The second has to do with hand path or hand direction. And the third will be about how you're bending or flexing or extending your lead wrist. So when I talk to my players about rotation, I usually start off by going over how to maneuver certain parts of their body in order to add more rotation. I always look at the lower body first and, and the ideas that they have. So I'm always surprised to, to, to find out that players that swing it more out to in, they have this idea that they're trying to keep their trail knee very, very stiff. They're not trying to move, move that trail knee at all, okay? And it's important to note that in order for you to rotate your hip, there has to be a certain amount of change in your knee flex, okay? So that would mean that your lead knee would have to bend forward and your trail leg would have to straighten out to some degree. We obviously don't have to you know, lock out the trail knee, okay? But if you were to do this simple exercise and just, just get into your posture and turn your hip and just allow your knees to change flex a little bit, you'll notice that it's very, very easy to kind of turn your hip or get the belt pointing a lot more kind of towards this camera. When a player withholds that knee or keeps it bent, right, and they have this idea of almost turning into their trail leg like this, you can see my knee isn't um, isn't really moving a lot. So that's actually limiting your mobility and your range of motion. Now, the reason why this is so important to have enough rotation at the start is because the more rotation you have, the more range of motion you have for your hands to move more around you. Um, it affects the depth of your hands, like how deep behind you your hands can get, um, which again will, will play a role in how well um, you can swing it into out. Now, the players that have the least amount of rotation at the very beginning have a harder time or more difficult time getting their hands to move around them. You'll see that they have their hands t uh, tend to move more straight back or stay more in front of them, okay? Uh, which again, it's gonna make it very, very difficult for them to swing it more degrees into out and, and most likely swing it over and across. Now from the face on view, I just wanna go over or talk about probably the most common pattern or swing pattern that I see among players that have a difficulty rotating their bodies and swings at most degrees like out to in. When a player comes in, what I see very, very commonly is a swing that kind of looks like this. When they do take it back like this, you can see that one, their lead shoulder kind of stays more or less like directly on the golf ball or in front of the golf ball, okay? And I can see that their lower body has moved slightly away from the target as they take it back, okay? so. From this view, you can still see my trail shoulder, all right? And that just, again, visually tells me that at this point, they don't have very much rotation in the chest, okay? And because they're moving their hip away from the target, that actually also limits um, mobility in terms of rotation in the lower body. So from the side view, it looks like, like this. You can see that my hands don't really get um, behind me much. There's very little kind of changing in the knee flex, okay? Um, also withholding the, the rotation of my hip. So if you are struggling with rotation and you do tend to slice the golf ball, then you're probably swinging it in this pattern to some degree. I wanna show you the difference between this position and more of the correct position with the correct amount of rotation. So from here, the difference would be here. Okay, so remember you're going from here to here. So I did basically two things. So one is that I maneuvered my lead shoulder more behind the golf ball, okay? And I changed my knee flex more. And as I was changing my knee flex and pulling my lead shoulder behind the golf ball, I was keeping my lower body kind of into the target, okay? So again, 
this position versus this position. All right, so if you watch from the side view, we get into that same position, All right? Very little change in your knee flex. And, and also, one important thing to note is that if my hips can't rotate, then it affects the mobility in my chest as well. Okay, so when I add this extra f change in flex in my lower body, you can see that my upper body, is e it makes it easier for my upper body to turn more as well. So that helps bring my lead shoulder more behind the golf ball. And, and that affects the, the, the position of my hands and in relation to my body. You can see that I got a little bit deeper behind me. And that's going to allow me or give me a chance to swing the club more degrees in town. So the next topic has to do with hand path or hand depth. And for those of you who don't quite understand what that means, basically hand path is the direction at which you're moving your hands in the backswing. Okay, so you can move your hands more outwards, uh, more straight back, more kind of inwards. And hand depth has a lot to do with how far in front versus how far back behind you're moving your hands. Okay, so the more in front I keep my hands in front of my body, I have less depth, the more I get my hands kind of uh, across my chest and kind of behind me, um, then the more depth I have. So this idea or concept um, relates a lot to um, the, the previous topic about rotation. This is also super important in terms of being able to swing it more degrees in to out and, and is something that can withhold or make it very, very difficult for some, some players to swing it in to out. In general, when a player has very little rotation, um, it makes it more difficult for their hands to get across them. So you'll see that the people that swing at the most degrees out and cross will have the least amount of depth, okay? So that their hands will kind of go more straight back or kind of more kind of outside and away from their bodies. I want you guys to reference when my lead arm gets, you know, pretty close to parallel to the ground. And you can see that, you can see that when it gets to that position, my hands and or the shaft of the club would run through more of the base of my neck. Now, on the other hand, when a player gets their hands more moving more inwards and around them, and they tend to have more depth in their backswings, it becomes easier to swing it into out, just because if the hands are more behind them, um, then they're, it, it, they don't have to reroute things as much, probably more turned, okay? And because of that, they can, it's easier to get the club head to stay behind them more uh, or longer in the downswing and then deliver it more degrees into out. This second example, of the backswing is a more correct amount of depth and hand direction. So you can see when I take it back, my hands are going a little bit more inwards and around me. And then by the time my lead arm is parallel to the ground or pretty close to it, my hands or the grip and base of the shaft of the club is going to be running through pretty close to the bicep of my trail arm. Okay. And going through maybe the lower part of my bicep is also okay. All right. But getting to that position at that point will telling me that you're most likely moving your hands in the correct direction um, going around you. So in that position there, you're a lot more likely to swing the club on an in-to-out path. Okay, so the third and final topic for today's video would be how you're flexing or extending the lead wrist in the backswing. Now, the wrist can be a very complicated subject just because the wrist can be moving in so many different ways. But for the purpose of this video, I wanna share with you a very common pattern that players who swing uh, out to in kind of demonstrate versus what players who swing it more into out would demonstrate. So for a player that swings it the most degrees out to in, the most common pattern is that when they take the club back, almost immediately they'll start to cup their lead wrist or extend their lead wrist. And as they take the club further back in the back swing, you can see that the face kind of rolls more open as they keep continue to extend their lead wrist. And when they get to the top, you'll see that their, their club is one in a very laid off position, club face is very open, um, and again, lead wrist very, very extended. Downside to this position is that it's gonna influence the pattern of your downswing in a way that the club, since it's laid off, it's gonna wanna work more and more steep, okay? And because the club face is open, you wanna work it more steep in an attempt to shut the face. Now, when a player swings it more into out, you'll always notice that their wrists are kind of in a much more neutral position, or more flex position. When you get to the top, you can see more of the club face. The, the shaft of the club is more down, more or less down the line of the heels. And in this position here, it's gonna make it easier for your, for your club head to stay a bit more behind your hands.
okay, just for the way that your wrist is bent. And if the club head can stay more behind your hands, um, then it'll be easier for you to swing it into out. Now, I'm not saying that everybody has to have a flat lead wrist or everyone has to be flexed. There are definitely, um, you know, a, a lot of golfers that are slightly more extended in the lead wrist and, and, and can deliver the club on an in to out path. Generally speaking, after a certain point, if the, if, if the lead wrist is really, really extended, the, the pattern of the downswing is just more likely to be out and in front of the hands versus a player that is really, really flexed. They're a lot more likely to keep the club head behind the hands um, and deliver the club um, more in to out. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you want me to talk about any of these concepts in particular, then perhaps I can make another video about it in the future. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K Moss if you want to inquire about online lessons. I will leave a link to my website in the description box below. Um, just click on that and then you can see all the details there. But other than that, I will see you guys next week in part three.